All right, everybody, welcome to another first look here on The Nerd Nest. My name is Lloyd Hennison from nerdnest.tv. Today, we're taking a look at a game called Disco Elysium on Google Stadia. Um, this game is something that I've been wanting to play for a while. Um, it, this game won all sorts of awards. People are calling it uh, just a fantastic uh, a game. Um, and it's here on Google Stadia with no downloads. Just click play or purchase it, click play, and you're playing the game, which is pretty darn awesome. So we're going to jump into this with a first look, uh, the normal first looks that we do here on the network, uh, 15, 20, 30 minutes. We'll see where the game takes us. Um, with these more character-based RPGs, sometimes things take a little bit longer to get into. So we'll we'll kind of see what happens as we, uh, as we play some Disco Elysium. All right, so uh, I'm going to turn my camera off for a second uh, so you can see what's behind here. So select your archetype. Thinker, extremely intelligent, very bad with people, knows interesting facts, comes up with original ideas. Sensitive, very psychological, a magnetic personality, but unstable, might begin to lose his mind. Yikes, okay. Uh, physical, extremely physical, interacts with the world through his body, gets things done, but is dumb as a rock, or create your own. Yikes, okay, well, I really like being smart in these kind of role-playing games, so maybe the thinker is the guy... Although this, he's very bad with people, um, which isn't very good uh, as well. We'll go to the create your own character. Okay, so you have um, intellect, so you can go great. Psyche, how emotionally intelligent you are. Physique. Wow, okay. Well, you really, you can't be a jack of all trades here. You're kind of... Wow. Okay. Well, let's let's go back. Let's choose one of the uh, archetypes that uh, was given to us. Let's choose. Oh, this is tough. Let's. This is very tough. Um, let's choose thinker. We'll go with thinker. We'll see how that how that works for us. That was a tough choice. I hope you can increase your your stats a little bit as you make your way into the game. Uh, the furries are at home in the mirror. It's their address. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. <laughs> Your conscious for men, Cine. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Okay. Ancient reptilian brain. Never. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever? Never, ever, ever, baby. <laughs> Simply keep on non-existing. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. This is great. Give me some more. What was that? X something. An awareness creeps up on you. Limbic a system. A lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic source. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible <laughs> line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. The meat thing. All right, plunge back there, into fathomless dark, uh, no fathomless ball deep. of meat, no light in the formless nothing, just night swimming. <laughs> I like nothing. Or how about you cough up some more of that Coming sweet oblivion? Right up, sir. Smooth. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Allons-y. Let's go. All right. Nothing town to fuck all, Barra. <laughs> Return trip to the science, please. Let's visit the ancient Zero home. Uh, look, there's. I'm tired of being this type of animal, and who gives a shit? What? I don't. I don't. I don't know. Do you want me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? Do you really? <laughs> I do. I let me off. I like it if I told you what was back there. Why do you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Huh. Wait, I did this myself? Tell me, what's waiting for me? I don't care, I'm an idiot. A brave idiot. Yes, you're one disco mother. Okay, tell me, what is waiting for me? I don't care, I'm an idiot, a brave idiot. There's this giant ball there. 
Aníbal apes. Aníbal apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. Infinitesimally small. How big is the ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're juking it out. It's that large. Fine for resources. Hmm. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. <laughs> or you lose. All right, that sounds like something I would Somewhere do. Let's go. In the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment. Your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain. An undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the <laughs> desert. Hurting. Longing. <laughs> dancing to disco. A music. mother help me. There's a head attached to my neck and I'm in it. Or please no, I changed my mind. Take me back to the formless disembodied nothing. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. I know that an un Godly <laughs> Help someone cut my head off. It's trying to a murder the rest of me. Streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion call from hell. Somehow, you know what it is. A Caprice to name a motor carriage. Hmm. Alright, open my eyes. I'll turn that down a bit. That is annoying. And I'm in my underwear. The number of times that happens in a video game. Okay, doesn't happen very often. Alright, well he is majorly hung over. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so I can't walk around. Oh, what? Didn't want to do that. Uh, so I can't walk around. Let's see. Uh, let's take our pants. Oops, wrong button. All right, we got flare cut trousers. Got a we got a disco ass blazer. <laughs> oh, I love it. You hear a jingle? Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. My tie is on the uh, it's on that little fan. It says whirling in rags. On the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. The okay. Whirling in Rags is a hostel cafeteria on the urban coast, frequented by dock workers. Okay, cool. Alright, well his head his head must be hurting. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. All right, look out uh, or visual calculus. Uh, assess the damage. I'm at 92%. This is a white check. You may retry it. Double double ones always loses. Double sixes always wins. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. That's cool. That's cool. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand. But more likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Okay, assess the size. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist, like the okay. green shoe that's on the hat rack in the corner, which, coincidentally, is missing its friend. Okay, that's fair. Congratulations. <laughs> you smashed the window with your own <laughs> shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you can still find the other on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. Okay. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. All right, got experience, five XP. Interesting, all right. Um, I'm assuming this is what got me in all this trouble. A magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Let's see if we can put some music on. Reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. 
It's like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. Oh yeah, that's what I did. Maybe I should grab my shoe. The one that I have. So my left foot. Oh, okay. Take all. MP empty cassette case. Okay. Wonder if I can grab my tie from up here. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. So I have a 58% chance to grab the tie. Let's let's try that out. You swoop up and catch the tie. Nice. Snap. It's released from the blade. Once you have your hand is a truly hideous thick tie <laughs> with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. The blades come squeaking to a halt. All right. On the light bulb. Terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically <laughs> feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Your eyes burn. With oh, dang. That actually hurt it's me. It's not good. The lights are off again. Okay. That, that actually hurt. That is a major hangover if light is actually damaging you. The words fail to describe how rank it smells in here. They should have sent a poet. All right. You see bottles in the bathtub, wine, beer, and sweet liquors. Ooh. Don't mix. Don't mix. All right. White satin shirt. Do I want to look in the, the mirror? mirror? Hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a first discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Was this not the same Eno? That founds empires and lays waste to cities. Virile, uncaring towards the little things. So conceptualization, challenging success. Hmm, so maybe because of my intelligence, I was able to grab some more from this description? Probably maybe? not, no. Medium success, probably not, no. Logic. Hot water sprays from the faucet's base and steam covers the mirror. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Oh, As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. I don't care. Behold. <laughs> you have no idea who this thing is, <laughs> do you? Of course I do. It's um some kind of superstar. I think I'm a superstar. It appears you're also dead. <laughs> There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Nice. Why? I think it might be because I'm a superstar. Please stop. It's horrible. <laughs> you're scaring yourself. Oh, that's wonderful. No, this is what superstars do. Keep making you the face. Can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. What does uh -oh. it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Superstardom. God, I don't know. It's indescribable. I think it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off, too. It's, it's a sad has-been kind of way. There's some charm to it. There might have been ten years ago. It's little more than a cadaverous spasm now. Wow, okay. So, Encyclopedia Formidable 13. Dig deep in your mind to locate the source of the expression. Electrochemistry. Impossible. Uh, I have a 3% chance to get it. I'd have to get double sixes to get it. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. <laughs> Let's try this one. It belongs in the new. I almost got double sixes, actually. Of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, Free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Oh, okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. <laughs> Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, Boite de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, 
Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. So I adopted it. Why? I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it. Click, click. How long ago was the new? Anything else? Like, who am I? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? Oh, let's you do that have one. some understanding of the near history of disco. The rest is darkness. Aside from the useless fact that the motor carriage outside was a Caprice Canema. Everyone okay. loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Some 20 odd years. Wow. There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression. Looking good on you. <laughs> or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. All right. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. All right, let's try this. Let's try to... I, I'm going to fail this. I want to see what happens when I fail. It's too late. No. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. <laughs> it would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. All right, let the mirror be for now. Wow, that was that was an intense discussion with myself in the mirror. Oh god, he is so hungover. Yikes. All right, let's uh, see if we can leave our apartment. All right, okay, I'm not limping anymore. Hello, officer. Oh, not there. There. Calendar says it's March. The year is 51. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Miss Orange, disco dancer. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Officer, I'm a military personnel. Or turn your bloated face away from her beauty and just keep on walking. Uh, no. <laughs> officer, am I military personnel? Wait, I know, I'm a businessman, chief executive officer, right? The young woman shakes her head slowly. <laughs> officer could be an artistic statement. You're already prone to those. Officer is my stage name, right? I can see myself as a middling disco artist called The no, Officer. You're a police officer, sir. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. You goddamn right I'm a policeman and don't you forget it. <laughs> wow, that conversation would take a turn if I did that. I'm not. Unless you've been shitting us all this time. You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. I couldn't say. In truth, so far... Mostly drinking. You have no doubt about the drinking. But do you strike yourself as a tight-lipped drunk? She must have heard something. I might not know where I am or who I am or what a Kupri Kinema is, uh, but I know what one sounds like. Well, I don't remember being a cop or anything else. Who in the right mind would let me be an officer of the law? Uh, try the expression on her. Let her know you want her physically. <laughs> I should get going now. Leave. All right. Uh, why don't I remember Could being it be a cop? Because of the drinking. She hasn't had time to put her makeup on. This is her morning cigarette. She looks tired. Her beauty waning faster than it ought to at her age. She nods. Okay. I might not know where I am or who I am or what is. How I know what one sounds like. Blah blah blah. All right. Uh, but I do know when someone's not telling me the whole story. What am I There's doing here? What's my case? Back. He's been hanged. The body has been there for a week now. The locals probably got tired of it and called the cops. And why didn't I you didn't just tell need me to that? Overwhelm you with information. You seem a bit lost, officer. <laughs> What's this? A one in twelve chance? Let's try it. The words have already left your mouth. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. What was that? Come on, man. Pretty, please. One more time. 
<laughs> Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. <laughs> what kind of cop are you? Uh, I'm a cop of the apocalypse, a superstar cop. It's been established. I'm sorry, I don't know why you, why I said that. You're pretty. I'm sorry. I'm the sorry cop. I'm not sure I'm a cop at all. Uh, I I sure don't. I don't uh, remember being one. I think I might have lied. Okay, that's cool. Or if I can just maybe ask you to elaborate on that superstardom a tiny bit. Okay, it means I'm a bloated old drunk with sideburns and disco pants. If I don't have a choke up my sleeve, it's on me. Or I'm a scion of Guillaume Le Mignon. Um. <laughs> I have certainly been entertained. Thank you. Whatever you are, you should stick to it. Otherwise, it's going to suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. All right, then. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. Okay. All right, so what are we going to do here? Um, so I need to go get my other shoe, which is out on the balcony. Wonder if there's something on the table. Uh, 40 cents. Yeah. Or 40 real. All right, let's, uh, I can choose a door that's way far away, but not the one that's like right there. Okay, I can't choose that one. I don't want to choose her door because that's, you know, just creepy. Uh, this weekend edition of the satirical newspaper, Trompe le Monde. All right. Let's go. Can we go down? Yeah. Oh, wow. This So this game is not at all what I thought it would be. Uh, this this is hilarious, actually. Um, it, it must be fun being an idiot and not being able to talk to people. Uh, I could see some some comedy jumping up. Uh, from that. All right, well let's uh, let's have a peek around here. Okay, so there's a microphone, and that's a light, I think. Oh, that's lyrics. Okay, I got it. Big old karaoke mic, just waiting for someone to sing into it. Sandwich board. Oh, it's a speaker. Okay, connect to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. Let's talk to this guy. A man Gart. in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. <laughs> As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down at everything is cool between you and this guy. He's a big fan. Make some small talk. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird <laughs> I said, Look at lies the stuff among burn. piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Let me guess, I broke it? Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. This is the great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola. The part of the world you are in right now. Interesting. The small steel tag says as much. The great skewer. Stekoari skewer. Hey, what happened to the bird? Look. Your buddy is over there. He looks at the doors where a man in the bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you. Constant. All right. So we're done there. Okay, so what is this? Like, cutlery? Oh, a fire extinguisher. You can take a fire extinguisher? Uh, this is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. Menu's been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written on it. So I can catch a glimpse of Union paraphernalia, a strike poster, and some red pennants. The sign reads, Mess Hall Reserved for Union Members. Doors open at 1600 hours. This Royal Pinball Machine is unplugged. So that's my friend right there, right? A bottle of rum has been knocked over. A beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. I think that guy has a problem with, with booze. Not sure. Not positive on that, but, you know. A bespectacled man in Kim a orange Kitsuragi. is tapping his foot on the floor. 
Looks like he's waiting for someone. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Looks like he has a Pokeball on his chest on that image. On the sleeve of his bomber jacket, as well as on its back, are the same enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Uh, don't shake his Hello. head. I'm Kim Kisuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he is waiting for your name. All right. Uh, I don't really know my name. Just call me Officer. Um, invent a name for yourself. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like hmm. a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. It's not time okay, yet. Okay, then. <laughs> Trust information and disregard it. Looks like it. we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. Hmm. Okay, you mean him? Uh, yeah, just talk to if him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Okay. We'll have I haven't. For that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Uh, no. So, the body is still in the tree, where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Uh, what if I told you I'm not really a police officer? How can you be so sure I'm from the police, but I can't remember anything? What were you supposed to do again? Let's get going then. How can you be so sure I'm from the police? I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. Sure. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. Inspectorate General means internal affairs. What he's saying is he's not from the rat squad and okay. isn't supposed to suspect such things. Ah, okay. Oh, you mean the rat squad or you mean internal affairs? No need for derogatory terms. <laughs> They're only doing their job. Okay, then. He nods. Okay, uh, let's get going then. For you, officer. Okay, new task, interview cafeteria manager, new task, inspect victim's body. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Wait, shouldn't I have a badge or something? Check you pockets. You mean you don't have a badge? Uh, it wasn't on me when I woke up. Uh, I have my badge, a policeman, and I have my badge. Uh, it wasn't on me when Using I woke up. Using your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. Oops. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. That's but not getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Okay. Interesting. I want to go outside and see yeah. if I can find my shoe. Nothing. I, I don't I don't want to talk to you. I want to hit A to open the door. There we go. I'm going to go check out outside. I want to see if I can find my shoe. But man, this game is cool. Um, the fact that it's an um a role playing game, but there's luck, uh, that is factored into it, um, really interesting and not something at all that I thought it would be. A heap of snow melts in this wheelbarrow. street sign says F the police. Okay. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? Uh, you sound surprised. I have questions for you later. I want to go into the back area, I guess? Let's see if I can find the body or... Oh yeah, there's... That's an old body, and there's a random creepy kid. The corpse looks at you 
with bulging white eyes. Why would you leave the it there for seven days, dude? Does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His Ooh. lips are fish-like, and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. All right, turn around. This kid's ladder's rickety, but still climbable. It smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. The ladder's for kids. Wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. Hmm, okay. Let's talk to this kid. Kuno's got this. Ooh, throwing rocks at a dead body? That's if not good. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. <laughs> He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. All right. Hey, kid, a word. Police business. A moment of your time, please. I'm not getting into this right now. A moment Can't of your time, talk, please. Pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Never mind. Hey, Kuno, ride the lightning, Kuno. Kuno's rising at sea. The rake, Kuno. You should throw the rake at him, Kuno. No, there's a rake. Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. Weird. Okay. Uh, I don't have time for this. That was weird. Very, very weird. Uh, so, dumpster? The R wears a crown on the rim below, a light above descending. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. All right. Wow, there's there's lots to look at here. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pig's come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. All right, What's then. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? <laughs> All right, walk away. Uh, these kids are nasty. They're a little nasty. Just a little nasty. Um, let's see if there's anything else here that I can use. Uh, looks like there's a winch over here. Of some sort. I, I don't know what that is. Uh, this winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. Well, that's not close to where I was. <laughs> it's a box. Ooh, 20 cents and magnesium. 20... Real. Someone's trying to go herbs in this greenhouse. All right. Well, what's this? There mud? are several footprints in the mud left by work boots. Anywhere from six to 12 pairs have walked here. Let's see if I can get an exact count. Maybe more than 12. No. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. One. Standard work boot. Oh, wow. Steel reinforced toes. Number 46. Two. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Three. Hobnail. Wow. Four. Stat you don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prince apart as it is. The cold <laughs> Five. Another standard work boot. Six. An aberration. I just say. Light as air. Even pace. Same make of boot. But impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. You're not bad. <laughs> it's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it. And the seven, All right. the glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46. But the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. So he's a really good cop. Eight. He's just has a and drinking problem. Another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of... How many? I was pretty off then. I counted 20. The same guys are going back I and forth. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? 200? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built soon. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Possibly, yes. Hmm. 
But why? Oh, you can see the clues are appearing on the uh, screen as I'm finding things out. Uh, why, why did they have to carry yes, him? Yes, they could have used the makeshift stretcher or just march him up to the gallows. Maybe the victim Even wasn't conscious. To carry on a stretcher or between two men. Anyway, it's for future consideration. What else can you see? Wow, there's so many, so many things. Wow. Okay, so we've been doing this for 35 minutes. I think this is a good place to stop. So, um, Disco Elysium is not the game that I thought it is, and that's a good thing. Um, this is a role-playing game, text-heavy role-playing game, but the fact that you have these dice rolls that can give you more information or less information is really interesting. I could see a point where uh, it's like a 50% chance and that could solve solve a case or give you something good or make someone hate you. Um, so there's going to have to be some decisions that you make as you make your way through the game. What Do you want to take the risk here um, or do you want to just keep play it safe and do it that way? Um, I am a huge fan of this game. I, I love role-playing games. I've wanted to play this one for a while. It reminds me a lot of the um, kind of the Baldur's Gate style of role-playing games, um, like the TSR stuff, uh, kind of like three-quarter overhead uh, with lots of things to interact with. Uh, obviously, this game is a lot different than that, but it reminds me a lot of, of those old games, uh, which makes me really happy because I, I love that stuff. Uh, I love that stuff to death. All right, let's, uh, let's hit X to go in our character sheet. I want to see kind of what all this stuff is. Um, I have five of 100 skill points. Oh, so I'm thinking that you can put points into various different things. Maybe by increasing your intellect, all this stuff goes up. Interesting. All right. Um, can't... Uh, trying to go to the other things but it's not letting me switch over l2 and r2 maybe it has to be a little bit later in the game for me to access those things um oh i did not mean to heal uh i just wasted my healing item but uh i gained that or kid that one pair or that one point of uh, of of health that I was missing. Anyway, I think this is a good place to end. Uh, so it's going to do it for my first look of Disco Elysium on Google Stadia. What a cool role-playing game. I cannot wait to dig deeper into this game. Uh, everything is not as it seems, it would seem. Uh, I think there's some other stuff at play here, and I can't wait to uh, solve the mysteries. So anyway, that's going to do it for me. Lloyd Hannison from the Nerd Nest, thanks for joining us for this first look of Disco Elysium. If you like what you see here, make sure to hit subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and uh, leave us a comment below to letting us know what you think of this. Are there any other games on Stadia you'd like us to do first looks on? Let us know. Leave us a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Dasme, D-A-S-M-E. And of course, you can check out the Stadia Cast podcast. We record it every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern right here on this channel. Uh, but you can do a search for Stadia Cast on all the different podcatchers, and you can check out our show. Uh, we've been doing it since the name Stadia was a thing. Uh, so pre-Stadia pre coming out, we've been talking about it. Uh, we've been covering it for as long as it's been on the market. And we love talking about games, features, new stuff, uh, predictions. It's uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun, and we'd love it if you could check out the show. So anyway, that's going to do it for me, Lloyd Hannison from The Nerd Nest. Thanks for joining me for this first look, and we'll talk to you here on the next one.